Good to see you again. This is Arirang News, live from our studio in Seoul. I'm Na Hyun Gyeong. South Korea and the United States have begun their annual joint military exercises today. Although Seoul and Washington emphasize the exercises are purely defensive in nature, North Korea always strongly condemns them as a rehearsal for war. And this year, Pyongyang's criticism may have come with more than just words. Hwang Song Hee starts us off. It appears North Korea launched the two short-range missiles in protest against the joint military drills between South Korea and the United States. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said the missiles, with a range of around 500 kilometers, were fired into the East Sea from the western port city of Nampo at around 6.30 a.m. Korea time on Monday. It said the firing is probably North Korea's way of showing its opposition to the key resolve and full legal exercises, and added it remains vigilant against any additional launches. Some 220,000 South Korean and American troops are taking part in the annual joint military drills that began on Monday. The two-week-long key resolve exercise is a computerized command post training aimed at improving the combined forces operation and combat capabilities. The full legal exercise is a field training involving a set of land, sea and air maneuvers and runs till late April. This year, the U.S. has deployed a 3,500-ton combat ship, the USS Fort Worth, for the first time. The annual exercises always spark violent protests from Pyongyang. North Korea's military released a statement on Monday, vowing to retaliate, claiming the drills are a rehearsal for a northward invasion. Seoul and Washington say the exercises are purely defensive in nature. Hwang Sang-hee, Arirang News. In the meantime, senior diplomats from UN member countries, including South and North Korea, will have a heated debate this week in Geneva over Pyongyang's human rights abuses. The North's Foreign Minister Ri Su Yong is scheduled to address the UN Human Rights Council on Tuesday. Arirang's Connie Kim has more on this story. The two Koreas are likely to have a heated debate in Geneva this week over North Korea's dire human rights situation and the regime's nuclear program. North Korea's Foreign Minister Ri Su Yong will deliver a keynote speech at the UN Human Rights Council on Tuesday, during which he's expected to condemn the adoption of a UN resolution that calls for the North Korean leadership be referred to the International Criminal Court. Pyongyang has been demanding its human rights record be expunged after North Korean defector Shin Dong-hyuk admitted to falsifying parts of his story about his experiences in a prison camp. However, South Korea will refuse to budge on the issue, as Seoul's vice foreign minister Cho Tae-yeol is expected to call for follow-up measures to the UN human rights resolution during his speech. Human rights is a very sensitive issue for the North Korean regime. It seems as though North Korea will use all means and efforts to dodge the issue. The clash is likely to continue during talks over Pyongyang's nuclear program at the Conference on Disarmament. Echoing his comments from the previous UN address, the North Korean minister will almost certainly defend his country's nuclear program by stressing it's necessary for national security. The nuclear issue will be resolved if and when the threat to our sovereignty and right to life is removed. That means the termination of Washington's hostile policy toward our country. South Korea's diplomat will likely call for greater international efforts to push the North to give up its nuclear arms. This will mark the first time for a top North Korean diplomat to address the Human Rights Council and the Disarmament Conference. Experts say Pyongyang is desperate to counter the swell of international criticism over its human rights abuses and make the case for its widely condemned nuclear weapons program. Connie Kim, Arirang News. President Park Geun-hye has arrived in Kuwait, the first of four Middle Eastern countries she plans to visit this week. Now, this is the first time in eight years that a Korean president is visiting the country. The president aims to expand Korea's economic cooperation with the region beyond the usual oil and construction projects. Arirang's presidential office correspondent Choi Yoo-sun sends us this report from Kuwait. 
Since Korean businesses started winning construction projects in the Middle East in the 1970s, the region has become Korea's largest overseas market for plant construction, generating nearly 40 percent of total orders received. Korea also depends heavily on oil imports from the Middle East. During our trip, President Park Geun-hye will seek a more diversified and deeper economic cooperation with the region to bring about a new growth engine for the Korean economy. Speaking to reporters prior to departing Seoul, the president said that in preparation for the post-oil era, the Middle East is seeking to diversify its oil-centered industries and improve quality of living through developments in education, health care and infrastructure. She says this fits perfectly in line with her three-year economic plan to spur growth through innovation and structural reforms. So when President Park meets Middle Eastern leaders this week, she will discuss expanding Korea and the region's economic cooperation to include health care, IT, education and culture. The cooperative relationship will also develop from simply providing the region with labor and infrastructure to sharing knowledge and launching joint ventures. President Park is scheduled for back-to-back -back meetings with Kuwait's Amir, parliamentary speaker and prime minister on Monday. While economic cooperation will likely dominate their discussions, President Park also plans to seek Kuwait's support behind the North Korea and unification policies. Choi Yusun, Arirang News. Kuwait City. A Japanese historian says he hopes his book on the forced mobilization of Koreans during Japan's colonial rule will help restore the dignity of those who suffered. Yasuto Takeuchi told Yonam News on Sunday that he published the book this year to coincide with the 50th anniversary of diplomatic relations between Korea and Japan. His book, published in late January, contains the personal information such as age, place of work and place of death of over 10,000 Koreans who were subject to forced mobilization from 1939 to 1945. Takeuchi est estimates that roughly one-third or one-fifth of the Koreans that were killed after being being coerced into hard labor or to serve in the military. This is the second time he has published a book like this one. The first was published in 2007. A massive crowd gathered in Moscow over the weekend to mourn the death of Russia's opposition leader Boris Nemtsov. Officials are investigating the case, but given the political situation in Russia, there also a fear that those responsible for his death will never be found. Son jung -in reports. Tens of thousands of people gathered in central Moscow on Sunday carrying Russian flags and marching alongside the river Moskva. The streets were filled with protesters holding placards that said, I am not afraid, in memory of Boris Nemtsov, who was shot dead in the shadow of the Kremlin on Friday evening. Meanwhile, CCTV footage has emerged showing the moment of the shooting. The poor resolution video shows two people, believed to be Nemtsov and his female companion, walking across a bridge in central Moscow before a snow truck moves behind the couple to obscure the view of the shooting. This is not a mere murder but an act of terror. This is politically motivated and we need to find the truth behind this terror attack. Police believe there are two suspects involved and have expanded their investigation in search for them. The shooting happened two days before Nemtsov was to speak at a major anti-government rally. He was working on a report presenting evidence that he believed proved Russia was directly involved in the conflict in Ukraine, despite official denials from Moscow that it has supplied separatists with troops and weapons. Boris declared that he would reveal persuasive evidence about the involvement of Russian armed forces in Ukraine. Russian President Vladimir Putin has described the killing as a provocation and pledged to do everything to find and prosecute the killers and punish them. However, there are fears those responsible will never be found. Nemtsov supporters believe shadowy elements in the Russian government were behind the killing of one of Putin's most prominent critics.
손정인 아리랑 뉴스. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is in Washington now, where he will make his case before a joint session of Congress against a nuclear agreement on Iran's nuclear program. This, just as U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry heads to Geneva, where he hopes to finalize a nuclear pact with Iran ahead of a March 24th deadline. Before leaving on Sunday, Kerry said Netanyahu was welcome to address U.S. lawmakers, but warned against inciting a quote, political football. Netanyahu had accepted the invitation by Republican House Speaker John Boehner to speak before Congress on Tuesday morning local time over the objections of the Obama administration. Prime Minister Netanyahu has been adamantly against an emerging Iranian nuclear deal, instead proposing more economic sanctions on Tehran to curb its nuclear ambitions. Korea has posted a current account surplus every month for almost three years now. The Bank of Korea says January's surplus, the 35th consecutive monthly surplus, amounted to some 7 billion U.S. dollars, edging down 80 million dollars from December. It's looking likely that Korea will break its previous longest monthly surplus streak of three years and two months, which was set in 1986. It's not all good news, though, as a drop in exports coupled with with a bigger drop in imports is driving the current account surplus trend at the moment. Exports dropped 10 percent in January from the same period last year, while imports plunged almost 17 percent. The central bank says falling global oil prices are pulling down exports and imports. Now, Korea's industrial output in the meantime dropped by its biggest margin in almost two years in January. Statistics Korea says output across all industries plunged 1.7 percent in January compared to a month earlier. The agency attributes the drop to an unfavorable base effect in December last year when production in the mining and manufacturing sectors shot up by the most since September 2009. It also cited the Lunar New Year holiday that fell in February this year as Koreans tend to spend less in the month before the holiday season. From a year earlier, Korea's industrial output edged up 0.7 percent by sector output in mining and manufacturing dropped 3.7 percent in January from a month earlier but rose 1.8 percent from a year ago. Now, this next report is especially for those anxiously awaiting the release of Samsung's new Galaxy S series smartphones. The Korean tech giant unveiled its latest in Barcelona, Barcelona rather, on Sunday ahead of the Mobile World Congress. Our Shin Semin has this story. This is Galaxy S6 and Galaxy S6 Edge. These are the most advanced pop smartphones in the world with the capabilities no other phone can match. But that's not all. To use a technical engineering term, they also look really cool. Could this be a game changer for Samsung Electronics? The specifications certainly do seem to make a strong case for that. Introduced Sunday at the Samsung Unpacked event ahead of the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, the brand new Samsung Galaxy handsets have a better grip on both design and composition. The Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge, which comes with the curved display, sport a dazzling glass and lightweight metal architecture. Both have a faster processor, a better camera, and most importantly, a fast charging battery. Samsung ditched a replaceable battery from the S5 and added a wireless feature. They were the first brand ever to introduce wireless charging that's built in. It's also much faster. The new Galaxy phones only need a 10-minute charge to offer four hours of battery life. 
Totaling it up, Samsung says it'll take the S6 roughly half the time to charge as the iPhone 6. The phones are also loaded with a mobile payment system called Samsung Pay. Like its Apple counterpart, Samsung Pay uses NFC technology. But unlike Apple, it also has magnetic secure transmission technology developed by Lupe, which allows users to make mobile payments at most places where plastic cards are already accepted. With the flashy new handset duo, the company is hoping to lift its flagging sales and climb back to the top of the global smartphone market after having lost out to Apple last year. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. Well, mobile banking has made life much more convenient, but many people still struggle with authentication, the crucial first step in gaining access to your account online. Starting this year, though, that process could be simplified to just touching your credit card to your smartphone. Reports say Korean financial institutions are preparing to launch the new method, which uses near-field communication technology starting as early as in the first half of the year. If things go as planned, people won't have to go through the hassle of authenticating each transaction using a security code from their banks. And we are going to continue talking about smartphones. Now, one noticeable change that our smartphones has brought for cartoon lovers here in Korea is the way readers get a hold of their favorite cartoons. The sheer number of cartoons also jumped following the industry's boom. Arirang's Kwon Soa has this week's Industry Insight. Scrolling and touching. Anytime, anywhere. Korea's webtoon market is doing better than ever, spilling into other media like dramas and movies. The industry is expected to be worth some 270 million U.S. dollars this year. Webtoon makers are kept extremely busy with loads of original content uploaded every day, and most of it is free. Back in the day when Koreans had to make do with comics printed in books and magazines like these, they never hesitated to dig into their pockets to buy or even borrow them. Accessibility used to be key, but that led to the perception that webtoons should be free. More platforms charge money now. What attracts people to them is that there are no constraints in regards to their language or content. Webtoon story writer Chun Jin Sok, who is busy with his real estate serial Realtor, and Lee Jung Bum, whose psychological thriller webtoon Dr. Frost has been turned into a TV drama, agree that the boom helped rookie webtoonists and fostered intense competition, resulting in better overall quality. But the process takes more than major platforms and star webtoonists. From producing to publication and promotion, we assist artists and decide on which pieces could be developed into dramas or even characters. On portals, the only way to value webtoons is by the number of hits. A Comics is a web magazine without comics. We provide information to the general public, not manic fans. What would take Korea's webtoon industry to the next level? Success overseas. Before, individuals tried to elbow their way into the global market, but now they have a better chance, as the web portals do it for them. Experts say this year the industry could make its mark on the world stage, but only if it chooses the right themes, gets the translations right, and builds global networks. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. Bringing you the fresh updates from stories breaking in Korea and abroad. We give you a bigger and better picture of the world. Join Na Hyung Young live from Seoul every weekday only on Arirang.
Korea will soon have stronger gun control regulations after two deadly shooting incidents last week. The government and ruling party have agreed on a plan to require all guns to have GPS tracking devices and to ban individuals from carrying small air rifles or live ammunition. Also, gun storage will be restricted to only police stations with a jurisdiction over a gun owner's registered address or on hunting grounds. Now, guns can currently be stored at any police station in Korea. The two shooting incidents uh, last week, which left eight people dead, including the shooters, shocked the nation, which has the world's most restrictive gun control regulations. As of now, more than 170,000 guns have been licensed to individuals. Now, Korea is planning to invest 285 million U.S. dollars this year to enhance the safety of spent nuclear fuel, a 7.7 percent increase from last year. The Ministry of Science, ICT and Future Planning says the money will be spent on nuclear energy development, radiation technology development and enhancing the safety of small and medium-sized nuclear reactors. The government plans to continue its development of dry reprocessing methods for spent fuel in which 95 percent of re reprocessed fuel can be recycled. The ministry said it also hopes to come up with plans to replace the country's aging nuclear reactors. Whether you are a fan of this idea or not, implantable ID chips are no longer the stuff of science fiction, at least not for those working at an office complex in Sweden. The chip manufacturers say the chips do no harm to the body, but there are still concerns. Our Kim Minji has the details. Forget your keys or leave your company ID card at home. That's no longer a problem for workers at Epicenter, a high-tech office complex in Sweden, as workers can now access things with just a wave of their hand. Their key is a 12-millimeter radio frequency identification chip implant. Uh, it felt pretty scary, but at the same time it feel, felt very modern, very 2015. Employees with the chip implant can get into the office and unlock the photocopier. They can also exchange business cards with people they meet by swiping a hand over their smartphone. Although the chip's functions are limited at this stage, the CEO of the complex expects much more. Payments is, I think, one area. Uh, I think also for healthcare reasons, that you can sort of uh, uh, communicate with your doctor and, and you can get data on what you eat and, and, and sort of what your uh, physical status is. The chip implant is optional for workers in the office complex. The manufacturer says it poses no harm to the human body and will not set off metal detectors and is also safe during MRI scans. But while it may seem innovative and tech savvy, some have voiced concerns that it could be an invasion of privacy and pose a threat to a person's security. Kim min Arirang News. On the cultural front, a famous Italian artist who has for decades been recognized as one of Italy's top contemporary artists has brought his abstract sculptures to Seoul. Our Im Yun Hee takes us to the exhibition. Take a look. A baby in its mother's womb is a precious symbol of life. This baby is already leaving an imprint on its mother. Verona-born artist Novella Fanati is praised globally for his approach to art, using sculpture to capture life's special occasions and the unique aspects of humanity. Through a boundless imagination, dreams can embody the hopes of a father. It carries a message of not wanting to wake his precious sleeping daughter. Fanati takes a modern approach to his work, creating abstract sculptures that echo our world, but also suggests a different part of our lives. Humans are born on Earth and are reborn again. I want to create that flow. This leg, with a jutting arm holding a pair of lips, is not something you'll see in reality, but it represents a new, mysterious part of our world, a part that Fanati wants to explore. His abstract modern works have captured the imaginations of people from around the world, and now they're catching the attention of Koreans. Buongiorno is Italian for good morning. And that's just what Italian sculptor Novello Fanati's works convey, each sculpture embracing a cherished part of our lives. Immune Hee, Arirang News.
Hello, I'm Michelle Park here with the latest weather forecast. We begin the first month of spring today here in Korea, and the sky is looking crystal clear, but we have an unwelcome guest with us as well. Now, at the moment, we have a concerning amount of fine dust in the air all across the nation, approximately 100 micrograms per cubic meter, which is about three times higher than the usual, and we also have a good amount of yellow dust particles. But we are expecting the air quality to get better throughout the day as temperature rises and as for the sky conditions, we will be getting a good amount of sunshine. Now besides that, we can also expect a mild afternoon with readings 2 to 3 degrees higher than yesterday. However, it's going to get chillier tomorrow with rain in the forecast. Now going over to our temperature readings for today, so it will be lingering around 10 and Gwangju and Busan will both get up to 11 degrees. Moving over to other regions, Jeju-Wan gets up to 10 as well. Dokdo hits down to 8 while Mount Gunga is chilly at negative 2 degrees. That's all for now. I'm Shaw Park and I hope you have a wonderful day. And that's a wrap from us at this hour. I'm Nae Hyun Kyung in Seoul. More updates coming up at 6 p.m. Korea time.